Siege Tower Longswordsman on Arena was probably invented day one of Siege Towers being added to the game, but it's always been thought of as a meme strategy. It still kind of is, but I think I've found a way to make it work. There are a few variations that you can do based on the sieve that you're using, but the build can be pretty much the same for all sieves, as I initially made it for a generic economy with no eco bonus. The goal of the build is to train infantry and a siege tower, and then drop them over the opponent's walls to surprise a booming opponent. Since infantry fight light cav and monks decently, this strategy works best against light cav plus monks with 3 TC play. Just dropping longswords over the walls is not enough to win games, so sending 10 villagers over the walls to castle drop inside your opponent's base is also necessary. If you can get your first castle in range of your opponent's town center, you're very likely to be in a great position. This build allows for full castle age or faster imperial age as a follow up, so you can use it in a variety of situations. One of the unique quirks of this build is that it opens with a feudal boom. There are a few advantages of this. First, you get horse collar for all of your farms, so you have more food economy for longer, so you can spend your wood on other things. Second is that you gain stats on your scout. If your opponent doesn't realize you're up this early, he may be surprised and end up losing his scout. This can be a huge advantage if you can later get your villagers forward without being seen. The third main advantage of Feudal Boom is that you can defend tower rushes much easier. If you're up quickly, you can just counter tower while your opponent is still outside your walls, or easily wall behind with stone walls or houses. You can also get loom if you need it. For this strategy, you'll want to be on stone anyways, so if you have to defend against a trush, going to stone a bit earlier and defending with towers is no problem. The goal click up to castle age time is 31 villagers, which is around 2 to 6 villagers later than most fast castle builds. This is actually not that slow, and you'll find that you reach castle age just a bit after your opponent, but even so, your economy feels really good. There are three military units that you can initially build to load in the siege tower. Longswordsmen, pikemen, and eagle warriors. If you want to do this with an American sieve, eagles are probably the way to go. For Bulgarians, longswordsmen are best due to the free upgrades. You can do either pikemen or longswordsmen with Dravidians, and for every other sieve, pikemen is probably the way to go. Generally, this strat works especially well when your unique unit is infantry, so that you can reinforce from the front lines and then load them into your siege tower. The siege tower can tank 220 arrows, so you can zoom around your opponent's base without your infantry taking damage. For the initial three barracks infantry units, you can use them all a bit differently. Longswordsmen can take down buildings fast, so they can be useful for stealing enemy relics or getting rid of a siege workshop or market that's forward. Pikemen are great against cavalry, and if they get converted, they won't kill your villagers very fast. They're not as good as the other two units at killing monks, but since they're cheap, you can flood a lot of them and then make a unique infantry unit once you have your castle down. Eagles are just simply the best at everything if you have access to them. Fast movement speed, decent damage versus buildings, high pierce armor for running under town centers, and even conversion resistance against monks. They also have a bit of bonus damage against cavalry, so they can beat light cav pretty easily. With that out of the way, let's move on to the build. I'll be using Bulgarian's longswords for this, but for other sieves, you just have to adapt it slightly for whatever you want to make. The basic build order is usable for all three barracks units. Since the goal is to feudal boom, we need to get to feudal age pretty quickly. This involves taking only one or two sheep, and then just hunt from there. Your first six villagers stay on food under the town center, and then the next three go to wood. Keep loading up the hunt with villagers until you need a house, and then send a villager to build a house near the berries. This villager can then go to berries after the house is finished. With good eco management, you should be up to the feudal age on 19 villagers. The eco balance on the way up is 9 on wood with 2 lumber camps, 3 on berries, and the rest under your TC. Don't forget to build a house on the way to feudal age, as you'll need this right away. While upping, you should use your scout to find the enemy scout. Since you'll almost 100% be up faster than them, you should be able to kill their scout if you can find it. Once you reach Feudal Age, get Double Bit Axe and Horse Collar right away. Make sure to build farms until you have 7 total, and rally your town center to sheep. Make sure to build houses when you need them as well. After reaching 7 on farms, you can soon start sending new villagers to gold. Send villagers 25, 26, 27, 28, and 29 to gold. For pikemen, you can send the last 5 villagers in castle age instead, but it's not a big deal. After building a mining camp on gold, the next wood spending goals are to get a market and then blacksmith going. Villagers 30 and 31 can stay on sheep until they're finished, and then go to stone. 
3 on stone for Bulgarians and 4 for regular civs works well here. You can add 3 additional farms after your blacksmith is down for a total of 10. Once you have 31 villagers, you should be on your way to Castle Age. At this point, double check your eco balance. You should have 9 to 10 on wood, 5 on gold, 10 on farms, 3 on berries, and 3 or 4 on stone. As soon as you have 175 wood, make a barracks and then start training your unit of choice, after supplies for longswords of course. The timing when you attack is after your siege tower is built. You'll want to send whatever military you have as well as at least 10 villagers with the siege tower. Generally you'll want to send the villagers that are closest to the front of your base to reduce walking time, so this often means sending some farmers. You can set the rally point of your TC to farms for a while in this case as you will need food economy for villagers and more military. You can also send some of your lumberjacks to replace your farmers if you think that you'll need food more than wood. You should build a ram after the siege tower is complete so you can break a hole in your opponent's wall so you can get your siege tower inside later. When you get to your opponent's base, don't just send everything over the walls right away. You have to make sure that you can actually get your castle down first. Sending a few units over initially and keeping a few outside the walls to protect the siege tower can be good. If there's a place that you can build your castle, get your villagers over the wall as soon as possible and get the foundation started. Your military should prevent the enemy villagers from getting a tower and harass long enough to prevent a defensive castle. If your opponent does get a castle up, going for rams and petards can be very strong, especially now that rams move faster and can carry more units. If you have a unique infantry unit, training these can be very useful to load in your siege tower so you can snipe enemy mangonels and monks when you send your rams in. The micro is quite difficult for this, but when it all comes together, it's really great. You can even add a monastery to collect all the relics at some point, so that even if you can't end the game here, you have a backup plan that you can fall back on. If your opponent goes for a faster imp with a castle for trebs and you won't be able to snipe the trebs under the castle, just giving up your forward and booming while maintaining map control with Castle Age military can be a great play. Here's an example attack plan. You'll likely have to adapt it depending on your opponent's response, but doing it like this if the opponent is just booming or gets completely blindsided is good. Step 1. Get at least 2 or 3 military units over the wall, and then all of the villagers. The few military units will run forward giving some scouting and blocking quick building placements to deny your castle. Step 2. Place the castle or crepost ideally in range of a town center. Step 3. Get the rest of your military over the walls. Step 4. Use one villager to build an outpost forward and one to build a siege workshop. Step 5. After the castle is complete, use your forward villagers to collect from a forward gold or stone. If there's no forward resource, use your castle to help destroy a stone wall and take a resource outside your opponent's base that's near your castle. You should make some outposts around your opponent's base at this point as well to spot sneak villagers. This is also when you can get a monastery. Step 6. Get to 2 or 3 rams and garrison the siege tower with infantry. Send the rams to take out the enemy town center while using the siege tower to zone monks and mangonels. You should have a few repair villagers for your rams so that they don't die to enemy villagers. If your opponent has to use villagers to kill your rams, they'll die to your castle or crepost, hopefully. Step 7. Once the town center goes down, build another castle around the same spot. This will give you another area to attack the next town center from. Step 8. Repeat steps 6 and 7 until you win. This is a fairly complex game plan, but I think it's necessary here as you have to do everything efficiently whenever you do low economy plays. There are so many ways this strategy can play out, so I hope you all enjoy trying this build. Good luck and have fun!